You already know that life has its ups and downs. But those can get a little wacky, too. Take airline travel. The short-hop leader among scheduled commercial flights remains the route of the Scottish airline Logan Air. It connects two islands, Westray and Papa Westray. The distance of this route is less than 2 miles. In good weather, the flight can take just 47 seconds. If you have very good eyesight, then from the airport of departure, you can see the airport of arrival and even the friends meeting you. These two islands are part of the Orkney Archipelago. Wow, is that from Lord of the Rings? It has over 70 islands, and there are no bridges between them. So orcs out there travel by boat, ferry, or as in this case, by aeroplane. It's designed for 8 passengers, and your seat neighbor won't even have time to introduce themselves properly. You can just nod. The flight's altitude doesn't exceed 300 feet. So, sitting by the window, you can enjoy the magnificent landscapes of Scotland. Just not for long. Jetting from one country to another doesn't always mean long packing an hour sitting at the airport. The shortest international flight belongs to Austrian Airlines. It connects St. Gallen, Switzerland, and Friedrichshafen, Germany. The distance between them is only 13 miles. The journey by car at a maximum permitted speed of 55 miles per hour would take only 12 minutes, but it's not that simple. Somebody put some mountains and a lake between the two cities, so the trip would take you at least an hour. In Europe, the flight between Vienna, Austria and Bratislava, Slovakia is the shortest between two capitals. The distance is about 32 miles, and the travel time is no more than 10 minutes after takeoff. Austrian airline Fly Nikki launched this route in 2015. They plan to operate six flights a week. But the idea didn't catch on well among passengers. Land transport connection in this region is highly developed. You only have to sit in a car, train, or bus in Bratislava, and in less than an hour you will enjoy the Vienna Opera or the most delicious strudel in the world. Oh, now I'm hungry. The shortest flight in North America is operated by the Canadian Greater Toronto Airlines. It connects two cities in Ontario, Toronto and Niagara Falls. Bring your own barrel. You know, in case you want to ride the falls. Anyway, the distance is 35 miles and travel time is 12 minutes. Yeah, sure, you can go by car. But the distance will be doubled and the travel time will be at least one and a half hours or even longer because of the traffic. The shortest beach flight belongs to the Cayman Islands, which are the British Overseas Territories in the Caribbean Sea. Millions of tourists from all over the world relax on the white beaches and enjoy the exotic nature of these islands. If you confuse your destination and arrive at the Little Cayman Island and your hotel is on the Cayman Brack Island, well, just buy a plane ticket, and in 10 minutes your plane will land at the right place. The distance between the two is only 13 miles. The shortest intercontinental flight is operated by Royal Air Mara. It connects Tangier, Morocco and Gibraltar, British Overseas Territory. The distance is 42 miles. It actually connects Africa and the Iberian Peninsula in Europe. Here, at the border with Spain, there is a piece of Britain with its red phone booths, cabs and traditional food. And the Rock of Gibraltar is also home to a bunch of apes, also British I guess, who entertain the tourists. This is the only place in the world where the airstrip crosses the highway. When planes take off and land, they block the road and the cars let them pass. Now I think I would too. One of the riskiest airfields with a short airstrip is the airport of Nepal. If suddenly you decide to conquer Everest someday, then you will start an extreme adventure even as your plane lands at Nepal's Lukla Airport. The airstrip has a slope of 12% which allows the aircraft to take off or land in a limited area. After all, the length of the airstrip is only 1,700 feet, and the width is only 65 feet. For comparison, the average runway length is 1.25 miles. But that's not all. The airport is 1.8 miles above sea level, with a mountain on one side and a gorge on the other, and the end of the airstrip almost bears against the chasm. At this altitude, the weather constantly changes, so flights are often delayed or just canceled. There is no artificial lighting on the airstrip. There is no radar equipment there either. Pilots carry out all maneuvers manually. Planes have to land at first try, 
because there's simply no space to turn around and try again. Flights are operated mostly early in the morning, when the calmest weather conditions, no mist, wind, or clouds. Even the craziest ride in Disneyland would not beat the landing at Lukla Airport. How about the shortest distance between a plane and your head? Let's move to the island of St. Martin and the main airport of the Caribbean islands. If you're sunbathing on Maho Beach, get ready to duck. Huge airliners will fly over your head at a distance of only 50 feet. Hey, they're trying to land. The island is quite small, and so is the airstrip. It ends with water on both sides. Pilots have to fly as low as possible so that the landing gear touches the airstrip faster. Passengers of such flights remember those landings for a long time. The viewers from the beach can take incredible photos, and for pilots, it is kind of a qualification upgrade. So, it's pouring outside when you get on a plane. If you were in a car, you'd simply switch on the windshield wipers and the headlights after turning the key in the ignition. Do pilots do that? Airplanes spark so many questions, and it's time for some answers. Do planes have windshield wipers? Yes, commercial planes do, but they're only used during taxiing, takeoff, and landing. Once a plane reaches its cruising altitude, pilots turn them off. The plane's speed is fast enough to clear the windshields from rain. Wipers might be absent on single-engine airplanes because the propeller airstream blows strong enough to keep the water away. What happens when a plane loses one engine in flight? Actually, it goes, hey, has anybody seen my engine? It was just here a second ago. No, nothing special. The plane actually just keeps flying. There are certificates for planes flying over oceans or long distances that state how long they can do it. For example, the Boeing 787 can fly for more than 5 hours without the second engine. It's enough for pilots to plan a safe landing. Well, why is it so cold on a plane? The temperature on board averages 74 degrees Fahrenheit, about the same as in most office buildings. But you feel so cold because your body doesn't move much producing less heat to warm itself. The crew doesn't turn the heat up because hot air can cause some passengers to faint during the flight. Do airplanes have horns? Yeah, and some of them have a whole trumpet section. Actually, yes, they do have horns, but pilots don't use it to scare away birds or get other aircraft's attention in the sky. Hey, move over, buddy! Actually, you can hear that high-pitched chime only on the ground when the plane isn't moving. Like when an engineer checks something in the cockpit and wants to get the attention of a ground crew member. Why do planes leave white trails in the sky? It happens when the engine burns fuel. It ejects water and carbon dioxide that gets mixed with the atmosphere. And since the air is cold at high altitude and this exhaust is hot, the water condenses and may freeze, creating those white tails. Do airplanes have brakes? Yes, there are multiple disc brakes made of carbon steel material, similar to the ones in your car. But using them only isn't enough to stop the plane when it touches the ground. The braking system also includes different surfaces that slide out of the wings and disrupt the airflow. Can a plane door open mid-flight? The cabin pressure is the force that won't let that happen. If someone tried to do it, they would have to overcome more than 24,000 pounds of pressure the weight of a ship anchor. Plus, there are lock bolts deep inside the aircraft structure that hold the door in place. What happens when lightning hits a plane? Now, statistics say this happens to every commercial plane about once a year. But the aircraft's metal parts and lightning protection systems prevent electrical buildup. So, in most cases, this leaves a plane with only a scorch mark on its surface. Why don't the seats and windows always line up? Good question! All commercial planes are designed with seats and windows perfectly aligned. But when an airline buys a jet, it often chooses to add extra seats. More seats mean more passengers and more tickets sold. And less of a view and less legroom for you. See how that works? Why do flight attendants touch the overhead compartment? You'd think that they're checking to see if it's closed tightly. But nope. They use a scalloped handrail hidden at the bottom of the overhead compartment for a steadier walk along the aisle. What are those white spiral marks on engines for? 
Well, since the ground staff wear hearing protection, they can't rely on their ears to decide if it's safe to approach the plane. Seeing that moving swirl on jet engines prompts them to stay away from the area. Why are there holes in airplane windows? Those windows actually have three panes of plexiglass. The tiny hole is in the middle one. It helps regulate the huge pressure difference inside and outside the cabin, so the outer pane can handle the load. If the outer pane happened to break, the middle one, even with a hole in it, would still be enough to keep the window intact. That hole also keeps the windows from fogging up. Why are there hooks on the wings? If there is an emergency landing on water, passengers have to step on the slippery wings to use some emergency exits. That's why crew members secure one end of a rope to the door frame and the other to the wing through the hook. Another rope is secured in the second hole, safely leading passengers along the wing to the inflatable slide. Why do the wings have different colored lights? It's for Christmas. Now, that red light on the left wing tip, the green one on the right, and the white one on the tail make up the plane's navigational lights. They let other pilots know the plane's position and the direction it's moving in, toward them or away. Do planes have ignition keys? Well, since ignition keys are usually a security measure, most commercial planes don't need them. They're locked in hangars under 24-7 surveillance. To start the engine, a pilot just pushes buttons and turns switches. But smaller private planes, like a Cessna, have ignition keys to start the engine and even locks on the doors. Why are there triangles above the windows? These black and sometimes red stickers let the crew know which window is best to look out when they want to check the moving parts of the wing. If you get motion sickness during the flight, try to choose a seat between the triangles for a more comfortable trip. How can you get extra space on a plane? Well, if you're lucky enough to get an aisle seat, there's a magic button near the hinge under the armrest closest to the aisle. Press it, and the armrest will swing up to the back of your seat. It seems strange that a commercial jet doesn't have keys to turn it on. But it's a bit more complicated than just turning a key. Instead, there's a series of buttons and dials on the control board that starts the complicated process. A battery provides the power to the aircraft that is charged through a small electric generator within the jet's tail. Airflow gets in and moves into the jet's engines to keep them cool. A reserve power then warms the turbines by turning them slowly until they start spinning at the right rate. Then, the engines can be turned on, one at a time. With up to four engines on a commercial jet, this entire process can take up to 90 minutes. Planes don't have keys to lock the doors either, but when they sit idle, jets have security guards constantly monitoring them. But even if someone happened to get past them, it wouldn't be a quick getaway. When you enter the plane, the captain keeps a close eye on the boarding process. They are not only in command of the flight deck, but also of the passenger's cabin. To become a commercial pilot, you gotta have a distance vision of at least 20-20. But depending on the airline, it's sometimes okay if your perfect vision is assisted with glasses. It's time to find a seat on the plane. You checked in late, and you've already had an unpleasant experience of not getting on your flight like that in the past. This is because airlines purposely overbook their flights, just in case there are no-shows or cancellations. So, you didn't get to choose your seat this time. You walk past the front seats in jealousy. There are seats that are always taken much faster because everyone wants to leave the plane as soon as possible after it lands. But if you're choosing safety over early departure, the back is the place to be. It's estimated to be 40% safer in the rear end of the plane. prefer to drive instead of flying? The chances of something dangerous happening to a plane during a flight are 1 in 11 million. Compare it to the likelihood of a car accident, which is 1 in 5,000. You've been placed at the emergency exit. Excellent! More legroom! Over the past 30 years, legroom has been decreasing more with every year. Up to 5 inches on some airlines. No, you haven't been getting taller. The reason behind this is the more people they're able to fit in, the more money the airline makes. Airlines don't build their own aircraft and use factory-made planes. From there, each airline will determine its own seating structure. This is also why the seats don't line up with the windows. 
but it doesn't matter. You have the best seat. Although it's always a bit concerning when sitting next to an emergency door. What if you accidentally knocked it while asleep and opened it? Relax, it's actually impossible to open these doors while flying. The air pressure inside pushes against every square inch of the cabin. On the door itself, this pressure equates to 1,000 pounds across every square foot of the door. But even if you somehow developed Hulk-like strength in your sleep, you still wouldn't be able to open it as there's a series of electrical and mechanical devices that latch it closed. The extra measures are important as the moment the door opens, the entire cabin temperature would quickly drop, and that drastic change in pressure would weaken the plane's structure. It's time for takeoff, and they've asked you to turn your phone off. Should you really? 10% of people have admitted that they don't turn theirs off and don't even set them to airplane mode. Cell phones can cause issues, but they don't disrupt the electronics as you might believe. There is a genuine concern that while you're flying in the air, your phone can receive signals from multiple towers on the ground, providing stronger distractions for the pilots. So let's make their job a little easier and turn it off. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.